to the point with Congressman Bill Pascrell, focusing on the concerns and issues facing the families of New Jersey's 9th Congressional District. Hello, I'm Congressman Bill Pascrell, and I would like to welcome you to this latest edition of To The Point. Today's show focuses on a difficult subject. School shootings remain a tragically regular occurrence in our country. Parkland, Florida, uh, Mount Pleasant, Michigan, Birmingham, Alabama, Great Mills, Maryland, Santa Fe, Texas, uh, Jonesburg, uh, Georgia, and Noblesville, Indiana. That's only a partial list of school shootings in America just this year alone, 2018. Think about it. The gun violence epidemic in our schools seems to get worse and worse, and this year we're on pace to set a grisly new record. Rather than pass proactive restrictions, many states and even Congress continue to make it easier to own and wield a firearm in public. After years of waiting for action, Some students and parents have said, enough is enough. They're leading the nation in calling for federal, state, and local governments to get off their backsides and pursue common sense solutions. The work of the students in the March for Our Lives movement, some not even old enough to drive, has shown more leadership in these last few months on the gun issue than many of my congressional colleagues have exhibited in the last 25 years. Today, we welcome two of these leaders, Elena Perez of Students Demand Action Bergen County and Larissa Mendez Downs, co-chair of Moms Demand Action Bergen Chapter. Everyone, welcome and thank you for coming here for today's discussion. And we're going to get, we're going to jump right into it. Where are we? Well, I guess it depends on what state you're in. It, uh, at the national level, not very far. Um, And when Moms Demand Action was founded in 2012, um, Shannon Watts, our founder, uh, knew that because nothing happened after the Sandy Hook massacre when 26 people, 20 of whom were children, were killed. So what moms and others have done is try to take action at the state's level. Um, As you know, Congressman, New Jersey's uh, Senate just passed six gun bills, which will make New Jersey even safer, and we right. are one of the safest states well, we in terms of tough, gun violence. We have gun good laws. gun laws. We can always do better, but we Abs- have absolutely. but we have good gun laws. Right. Um, but at the national level, it seems um, we've stalled. We've stalled for a long time. A lot of people have said that um, if nothing happened after Sandy Hook, nothing will happen. Obviously, we don't believe that. And what's been great about the Parkland uh, students and what young people like Elena have done since um, Parkland is that they haven't let the issue go out of the news cycle. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask Elena in, in, in a second, but they haven't let it go. It's just not one and done. It's not two demonstrations, three demonstrations, peaceful, and then go home and that's the end of it. I think they're media savvy. I think the fact that they very quickly amassed a social media following has been a huge component. I think that they're articulate. I also think that not only have they brought attention to the school shootings, but the broader issue of gun violence in the United States. So for example, um, several of them, of the Parkland students met with uh, kids from Chicago, uh, from other cities that that's have- That's different. That's different, exactly, yeah. more suburban gun violence. And really, mass shootings at the school level make up while they are horrific, of course, they make up a minority of gun deaths um, and gun violence in the United States. So they've sort of been able to bring attention to all of these things by social media, uh, by regular media, and because they're so passionate and articulate and and have been so good at coalition building, I think, they've been really able to keep the the issue on the airwaves. Well, you were also in the middle of this, Elena. You are in the middle of working with other people, not only kids in your own school, Lynn Hurst. Let's give a shout out for Lynn Hurst. Uh, not only working with the kids in the high school, but reaching out to other schools and other kids. Are you part of that as well, Elena? And tell me, do you think this is different? Does it feel different besides being different? 
to start off, yeah, it feels really different about like when we started Bergen County Students Demand Action, it started that we would go on Instagram and look who's having a walkout and then we DM or message the person say, okay, do you want to have be a part of this group? And now it's not even just Bergen County. I'm on FaceTime with kids from Texas, from Santa Fe, from wow. Parkland, from other countries. I was on FaceTime with a girl from Germany because wow. they wanted to know what's happening. And yeah. I mean, a couple of years, even before, right before I was born, you couldn't do that. Oh. So we have the momentum of, you could talk to kids from Newark in a minute that experience this every day, or you could talk to kids from Columbine who experienced the shooting in their school. How do you know people are listening to each other? Because we're good, we're good at talking, mm -hmm. particularly for the Congress. Do we listen? Are, you, are, are people your age listening? I think we are, which my teachers will maybe disagree with most of the time, but I feel when, especially students talking to students, you get this sense of, okay, their friend died, right. that could have been me, that could have been my best friend. So it starts hitting us, especially I feel my generation at a personal level, because we've never, I remember hearing about San, um, Sandy Hook, hysterical crying in Colonial. How old were you when that 11. happened? 11. You were 11. And then I remember hearing about Columbine before I could remember when I heard about it, because right. I wasn't even born. Or next was Parkland, and then after Parkland, we have Santa Fe, and a million I've ever, a million shootings I haven't named in yes. events. Yes. Because it's something that we hear in the news so frequent, a lot of people became numb to. Now, you heard, um, uh, and she was very clear about this, Larissa say, she doesn't see much action on the federal level. Do you have that perception? And do your folks and do your, do your, do your students that yet, yeah, your peers feel the same way? We do. And I think with midterms coming up, we definitely are pushing for um, voting f towards your candidates that have um, want common sense gun laws. Right. I think a lot of people get scared because we say common sense gun laws, thinking we're going to take all your guns away. Yeah. And that's Nobody not what that. we want. And we we're against that. Yeah, I'm told. You support the Second Amendment? I strongly support the, the Second Amendment. You support Amendment. the Second Amendment? Mom supports the Second and Amendment. And I support the yep. Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. what, what, what do we want? You articulate what we're looking for. We're looking for universal background checks. We would make it harder for people who have issues and who shouldn't be, who aren't able bodies to have weapons, right. be able to not have them. Um, I also think the end of private, show, private selling loop and gun show loophole, which you could get a gun without a background check. A lot of guns go north yeah. from south, mm -hmm. gun shows. Yeah. Um, also, we have the facts of ban bump stocks because it makes a semi-automatic weapon automatic right, right. even though they are ba automatic are banned yes um a ban on the ar-15 and a, well i'm trying that's just what i have on top of my head but yeah it's not i like i say my uncle owns guns and i'm fine with it it's just we own i trust him and i know he's not going to do anything harmful and he got it legal way yeah and I feel that we could end a lot of these shootings if we take account of who's getting them and how we get them. And it's I pretty think crazy, too. is it mm -hmm. not, when you can get on a line at an airport and be stopped because you're on a watch list, walk out of that airport mm -hmm. and go buy a gun. Mm -hmm. Is that insane? I mean, what am I missing here? Tell me what I'm missing, Larissa. You're absolutely right. And it's also insane that when over 90% of Americans support, uh, you know, initiatives like universal Including background those checks. those who belong to uh, gun organizations. Absolutely. And in fact, most of the NRA um, members support uh, responsible gun ownership, securing weaponry. Right. It really is um, the leadership that continues to be Why so stubborn. Why is the stubborn. leadership of these gun organizations so persistent? They, they believe that if you do something uh, to begin to mediate the situation, mm -hmm. you are on that slippery slope of getting rid of the Second Amendment. Is there reason for them to believe that? I mean, are they making it up or? No, there really isn't. And, and you know, the NRA was founded originally as a safety organization, a marksmanship organization. And it really became sometime in the late 70s, early 80s, when it started right. representing gun manufacturers, that it kind of went off the deep end. And there was always rumors throughout the Obama administration, which I'm sure you remember about, Obama coming to take the guns away. Well, that never happened. Um, That's a good bumper sticker. <laughs> yes. And then, in fact, the gun manufacturers have faced what they call the Trump slump because when uh, President Trump, who is uh, 
uh, very cozy with the NRA lobby, um, came to uh, power, there wasn't that idea that anybody was going to take anyone's guns away. I don't know why, if we have responsible gun owners, we can't have that conversation. You know, Moms has a program we call Be Smart. It's about secure gun ownership in the home, whether you're going to somebody's house, we ask about peanut allergies, cats, dogs, Everything. unsecured pools. So this program says, ask about guns in someone else's home. Um, or, you know, if somebody's coming to your house. Are they locked up? Are they locked up? That's all. And so we need to have that awkward conversation. Right. And it's okay. And most gun owners, and one of the best presentations I did about Be Smart was in front of a, a rifle club. And they were super respectful. And they enjoyed the conversation. Um, and I think it was because we approached were in, in the middle. We all agreed that we don't want our children to be hurt. We right. all agree we want our kids we to be safe. <laughs> we should agree. That's a basic. Right. Their right to life pretty basic. are very basic. So. And how do we do that? And how do we do that? Do we do that, Elena, by putting giving a gun to every teacher? Do you think? No. Why not? Because we also we have the problem with do first are teachers able to have guns? If a, there's a shooting that breaks out in the school, can the teacher accidentally shoot the student, and then the teacher has to live with that? And now they've killed a student while they should be focusing on protecting their students or helping them hide. Show you, show you the progress that we've made. 25 years ago, I had a debate on television with a prominent state New Jersey senator. Not of my party, doesn't matter. He said the, the solution is very simple. Don't, don't have any worry about gun violence. What you need to worry about that everybody who can should carry a gun. And his salute, we had just been talking about a bank robbery in Florida. And he said, what if you know, people were carrying there? That was at the time when his debate about which states were gonna allow you to carry openly or underneath your jacket or whatever. He said, what if everybody had a gun? They would have been able to shoot down the bank robber. And I remember what I, my, my, my knee-jerk reaction, whether it was correct or not is another question. My knee-jerk reaction is, what if he had shot some customers mm -hmm. in his anxiety to stop the brutality, whatever the brutality was in this bank robbery? Isn't it possible that we've increased the chances? And his answer was, well, we'll stop the bank robber. The question is, do you think that's a solution either? Everybody carry a gun who could carry a gun. No. We'll go back to the Wild West. No. Because now we have to make our citizens feel like it's their job to protect a person coming with a gun. My cousin had the sign that says, um, future teacher, not a future soldier. Because we should be focusing on how to prevent these from happening, these events, these school shootings, these regular shootings from happening. Not saying, okay, if I have a gun, I'm going to stop it and everything's going to be good now. We don't have to worry about it. Now we have students struggling with PTSD. Right, right. Now we have teachers that feel like they have to throw themselves in front of students or with a gun to, and maybe shoot their right. classmate or something. So, And are they able-bodied to have them? Like, what if that person feels suicidal? Yeah. So now we're focusing if everyone could have a gun. Before you purchase a weapon, should it be mandatory that you must go through a universal check to see your background, whether you are capable of using it, whether you are fit mm -hmm. to have this gun on your presence. And I guess it would be particularly more significant if you were in a state where you can carry, you know? There are those, there are some in New Jersey who'd like that to happen too. On a federal level, I'm strictly against that, but that's up to the state, that's not up to the federal government. I'd be very suspect of that situation. I mean, we're going we're gonna to turn this into the Wild West. There's no two ways about it. Absolutely. And universal background checks, what would be helpful at the federal level is that at the state level, they're very spotty. I mean, look what happened in, in, in Texas. Yeah. Um, you know, you have, um, you have somebody who, whose records weren't submitted by the uh, right. Air Force to the proper authorities, and that never made That's... it onto the NICS space. So 
we have a very spotty state system because all of the states have very different laws on the records about who can carry. Uh, is it a shall carry or may carry state? Right, right. Um, all of these different factors. And so it makes any attempts to sort of hodgepodge the system less effective. And, right. and so the idea of universal background checks to make them comprehensive um, and universal is is a tough hurdle, uh, but I, but it is supported by over 90% of Americans, and if we have the political will, yeah. we can do it. Right. Well, if the Congress has the political will, um, we're, we're, we're frightened in the, in the House of Representatives under present leadership to even bring it up. Mm. This has nothing to do with Democrat and Republican. The leadership, the majority, doesn't want to even talk about it because it may have to come up to a vote. We know there are hot button issues. We know there's a lot of visceralness in, in discussion of these issues. Don't we want to make it easier to, for kids to live and grow up? Why make it more difficult for them if, if more weapons are, are, are available? You know, some may argue that things haven't changed. Uh, when I was in the Jersey legislature, I introduced legislation along with a few other legislators to ban assault weapons. I think they should be banned. We made a mistake by putting more weapons in that ban than should have been in. And no question about it. So we need to be careful about what we ban. If we ban that weapon or we ban this weapon. We want sportsmen to have their way in legal means. We want those people who are aficionados to have their way if everybody's doing, doing it legal. What we don't want is for anybody to put anyone else in jeopardy. Protect yourself, why not? There's nothing wrong with that. You know, we advocate it. So we passed the legislation in the early 90s. Jim Florio was the governor at the time, and he chose Patterson, New Jersey, where I was the mayor, to come and sign the legislation. So we're going to go out and sign the legislation 10 o'clock in the morning in front of City Hall, and the public safety director stopped me and said, you can't go out there like that. I said, what do you mean I can't go out there like that? You need a flak jacket. I had to wear a flak jacket. The governor, who well, I assume probably on his trip up from Trenton put it on, he had his flak jacket. And that's the only way we signed this legislation. Apparently people had made some phone calls the night before, we're gonna get those I saw whatever, and but this is these are strange, strange times. Are we past that stage, or is it even more dangerous now? What do you think? I have a few takes on that. I think we are not fully past the stage. I feel we have come a, some ways, but like my school, for example, we get threats a lot. Other schools I know have been on lockdown for, we were on lockdown for six hours, three hours once. Schools I've known been locked down for six, seven right, hours. Right. Because we don't know. Did they catch yeah. the people who did it? Um, not all the time, because sometimes it's like a computer threat, sometimes right. it's a student threat. Like, um, Nutley got a threat the other day, but, um, a few weeks ago, by, right after Parkland, by a student. That's and pretty because, sick. Yeah, because. What do you, what, what's the punishment for that? Punishment usually expelling um, our. I don't know the kid's name, but I know the kid only got suspended. Yeah. Because since they found no weapons in his house. He had it, weapons. He didn't. They, oh, he didn't. Since they found no weapons in someone's house. So he's been a real wise guy. Yeah. But then it always gives you the uncomfort with maybe he has a way of getting it. Yeah. And he's back in school or she's back in school. And we're learning a lot about these perpetrators. Mm -hmm. uh, whether and, or, or, you know, if they're killed at the scene or are they not killed at the scene. We learn so much about their in their lives, about no one reached out. Hmm. Even the authorities maybe were hesitant to do that. We all have a responsibility here, don't we? Oh, absolutely. And really the literature seems to suggest that it's actually wellness programs, right. um, holistic health programs that end up making the difference. One of our allies, the Sandy Hook Promise, they were founded by several right. parents after Sandy Hook, their uh, idea is inclusion that starts at the elementary school level, but at the middle school and high school level, Sandy Hook Promise um, has programs about 
saying something if you see something. Um, they have an app right. that sort right. of correlates with that, and therefore, if somebody say, says something or sees something, it, not, not ignoring it, not overreacting. It, absolutely. It's about going through the steps to ensure right. that if a threat is made, then there is follow-up, right. um, to ensure that there's an inclusivity in the school. Um, and that is not to place the burden on victims, because that certainly happened after Parkland. Um, because that's not the case at all. But about making the community responsive to those kind of there threats. Do something, we need to do something about guns. We know we need to do something about mental health. We finally, just a few years ago, got parity to discuss it like any other illness. But we need to do something about guns too. And the extreme is not what anyone's advocating. And that is, let's do away, let's take the guns out of people's hands. No one's advocating that. No. Two of the last um, uh, school shootings have been uh, young people getting access to parents' guns. Right. Um, and in the case of, ex for example, uh, gun suicides, which are right. two-thirds of the deaths that we have in the United States, right. if a person has access to a gun, they're more likely to make a fatal suicide decision, for example. So. Access, Massachusetts is the one state in the union where there are laws regarding how to secure a weapon. Yes. In various different states, including New Jersey, we have laws that cover if a child, I believe it's under 16 and under 14, um, it's not the full range to 18 though, um, if a child gains access and injures himself or other, then there's um, consequences, but otherwise, right. no. So again, a spotty state system of laws, um, and that's a big step that we could take at the federal level. I'm not happy to report to you that in this last budget, mm. money was taken out of the budget, particularly for research on the technology of guns. Right. Now, some of the universities in New Jersey are doing fantastic work, NJIT, Stevens, etc., cetera, and smart gun which I believe in. I had legislation a few years ago, it didn't go anyplace, but only the person who owns the gun can fire the gun because of prints and all of that. And I think that's healthy because many people are being killed by other people's guns. Mm -hmm. Children are getting hold of guns and they wouldn't be able to fire it exactly. because they wouldn't mm -hmm. have the print on that gun. The science is not there. Uh, the science is there to prevent that from happening. What, what's so bizarre about that, tell me? What's so anti-Second Amendment about that? I don't honestly know, especially when the technology also exists for very basic safes that would give you immediate access. That's a lot of the pushback we get. Well, what if I want to get my, my gun immediately right. in case of immediate danger to my household or my house or family? And you know, we talked about this, Heller versus DC gives people the fundamental right to own a gun for um, self-defense right. in their homes, and that's great. But the technology exists where you can put your fingerprints, the safe immediately opens, and you have access yeah. to your weapon. And we need to, to invest in the research. The, the question, uh, I, I was in the Congress, mm -hmm. along with Carolyn McCarthy, Congresswoman, she's no longer a Congresswoman, from Long Island, when her husband was killed on, a, on an L.I. train mm -hmm. and her son was wounded, I went to the hospital. I, she then ran for Congress, and we helped in a minor way, but we helped put together the Million Moms March on Washington after Columbine. Mm -hmm. They come out of the woodwork. Everybody was there. Everybody was there. And then it was done. I don't believe that people your age are saying one and done. I personally believe in listening, particularly those kids from Parkland. My heart goes out to them. They are real American heroes like yourself, like yourself. American heroes are standing up for what they think is right. They're not afraid. They're not here to hurt anybody. They're here to protect people. So I have a lot of faith in what those kids and you kids, I'm sorry for calling you kid, and what you young ladies and gentlemen are doing in the United States of America. And I would tell my audience over and over again, don't be depressed about this. You gotta be up for this. You gotta be, this, this is not for the faint at heart. 
And if you sit back and say, well, that's for other people to decide, that's the problem in America today. We can't let the government solve all these problems. We've got to show our responsibilities as, as citizens, as citizens. And I think that's possible. I think that'll change, that change the entire situation. If people, if, if, if these young people are as I perceive them to be into this and they're not going home, this is something very, very, very different. I think it is a game changer. I think um, people Elena's age, you're not 18 yet. I'm 17. 17, but they're already, even the under 18 crowd are mobilizing their peers to right. get registered to vote to file for absentee ballots if they're going to be starting college, for example. Um, the Parkland kids are doing a right. nationwide tour this summer to register people to vote. So I think what you said, Congressman, about citizens, if that's the key word. Right. It's using your rights as a citizen, your free speech, your right to vote. Um, that's ultimately going to make a difference. I, I, I am so pleased that both many, many Democrats and Republicans are going to be rational about this and reasonable about this. I see that many folks on the other side of the aisle are, are coming forward now. They don't want to take guns away from anybody, but they're saying, let's stop this insanity. Let's do something about it. We come together. We can do something about it in this, in this, in this school, in all the schools, because we cannot take guns off the table when we're discussing gun violence. Absolutely. I want to thank you both. You did, you did a great job. You know where I stand. I'm out there with try to get to as many groups as I can. There's only a certain time in, in a week, but enough time in a week. But I'm, I'm doing my best, I, I can assure you, plus with legislation. But I don't want to hang on my legislation. I'm not saying I'm doing my job if I introduce legislation. I always say that's the easy part. You've got to change what's out there, the culture. And that's what I'm looking for. Thank you both. You've done a great job. I'm proud of both of you. And I know you're going to bring about change. Look, I want to thank you for watching this edition of To The Point. I want to thank my guests, Elena and Larissa, for joining us today. They were spectacular. You've heard our thoughts. Now I'd like to hear what you think about today's show. If you have any comments, your concerns, your questions, stay tuned. Our address, our phone number, our website address will appear in a moment. Thanks again for tuning in. See you next time on To The Point. Thank you.